Hey there, welcome. You're listening to The James Show, News Talk 820 WBAP, now on FM at 93.3. Welcome back to The Big Show. Well, I didn't spend a whole lot of time watching the Trump trial today because I was busy doing something more pleasurable. Uh, I was getting uh, kicked between the legs by a donkey, and that was the better option. I, I got lucky, actually. I got to, got to do that instead of having to watch the Trump trial. So in order to, for us to have some sort of uh, legal expertise, let's welcome back Hans von Spakowski. Uh, welcome to the James Show, and just pretend I know nothing about it, Mr. Heritage Foundation. Get me all caught up on what happened now that Stormy's back on the stand. Well, the first thing for people to understand is that there was absolutely no reason whatsoever for the prosecution to bring Stormy Daniels in as a witness. And the reason I say that is, remember, the the main part of their criminal prosecution is a claim that the $130,000 settlement payment that was made to Stormy Daniels um, was falsely listed in the business records as a legal expense instead of a campaign-related expense. Well, nobody is denying that the payment was made. Nobody is denying that it was uh, listed as a legal expense. In fact, they already had Stormy Daniels lawyer in as a witness to testify about all this. So Stormy Daniels isn't needed, except very clearly, the prosecution wanted her there to relate the lurid details of the supposed you know, sexual encounter she had with Donald Trump in order to bias and prejudice the jury. There was no other reason to have her in there because the details of what may or may not have happened between the two of them is totally irrelevant to the issue in the case. And of course, uh, even the judge, this is a very biased judge, even the judge at one point uh, uh, in her first day of testimony said, look, a lot of these details are not relevant. You need to move on, Mr. Prosecutor. But he shouldn't have allowed her in in the first place. Well, look, she's a professional. I expect her to be pretty elaborate when describing such things. One question I have is if there was a hush money agreement and she has spoken about it, didn't she violate the hush money agreement and she has to give the money back? What, whatever happened to that? Oh, in fact, that, no, you're exactly right. Look, not only that, but when she just in her description of what she and her lawyer did, which was in essence to threaten to publicly disclose this uh, supposed encounter in order to publicly humiliate uh, President Trump, and that they wouldn't do that if they got this payment. You know what, what she just described? The classic elements of the crime of extortion under New York law. If, if you try to obtain money from somebody in order to, by threatening them, that if they don't give you the money, you will publicly embarrass or humiliate them, that's extortion. That is and extortion. Yet, you know? She's never been criminally charged. And, of course, Alvin Bragg has no interest in criminally charging her. Hans von Spakowski, Heritage Foundation, thank you very much for your insight here. Uh, Continue watching the trial because tomorrow I'm going to go do something more fun. I'm going to hang out at the DMV instead of watching this trial. (laughs) Thank you, Hans. Heritage Foundation, you guys do great work up there. I really appreciate that. What do you think about that? 800-288-WBAP, 800-288-9227. Look. Everything sounds good. It sounds nice. But that's what it sounded like in the other New York trial. And if you think that this is uh, all going to go well and blow over and we can get back to business, I'm starting to uh, smell that he's going to be found guilty here. What do you think? 800-288-9227. It's the James Show. News Talk 820 WBAP. Now on FM at 93.3. Hey, welcome to the James Show. News Talk 820 WBAP. Now on FM at 93.3. Now, listen, I need you to think about this real hard, and some of you you are going to have to call in. About 1% of of you need to get out your phone and call 800-288-9227, because let's have this discussion. Let's have some grown-up discussions here. I think Trump's going to be found guilty. I think Trump is in a no-win situation. He doesn't have a sympathetic judge. He doesn't have a sympathetic jury. The prosecution is obviously out to get him. Uh, There is some nefarious stuff that happened here. I mean, we have an adult star and... uh, the lurid details of an affair and there's enough of a stink all around it. But remember there's people out there who have been convinced Trump is Hitler. And just like you were disappointed by the other trial that happened to also be 
in New York City. New York City! Well, this is similar. Now, it didn't go to a jury and have to go through the peers, but I just want you to be prepared to be uh, get disappointed by how this is going to turn out. Now, I'm not saying he's guilty. I'm saying he's going to be found guilty. And there's a few reasons why I think it's going to be hard for anyone who thinks this is Hitler to let him go. This is a paper crime. If it even exists, even if he is guilty of uh, what he's being accused, it's a paper crime. Who's the victim here? There, there's not a dead body. There's no one who was ripped off. There's no one who was robbed. There was no property destroyed. No one kicked a dog. or So there, there's, there's nothing tangible about this. So how do you prove or disprove what is just a discussion, an argument? Really hard, right? Well, we're in the position here where... The man is guilty until proven innocent in the eyes of that jury. You just have to assume it. I know it's not fair. I know this isn't moral or ethical. And the the lady that's holding the scales of justice is supposed to be blindfolded. But come on. Truth be told, this guy is going to have to prove his innocence because the jury, you just have to assume, is not a Trump favorable jury. I don't see any MAGA hats over there. But, you know, I'm not, again, I'm not saying he's guilty. I'm saying he's going to be found guilty. Is it going to stick? I don't know. Not not really the issue here. Because, look, when he's found guilty, immediately there's going to be an appeals process. He's not going to be thrown in jail immediately. And maybe a year from now or two years from now or three years from now, when no one's paying attention, there's going to be a gavel swing and it'll be on page 17 of the newspaper, metaphorically speaking, because those things hardly exist anymore. Uh, and there's all kinds of uh, points that have been made by guests on the James show and on other channels where... Uh, If they ever appeal this, it's going to be thrown out because this was wrong or this was suspicious or this was uh, outside of the norms. So is it going to stick? I don't know. Is he going to go to jail? I don't know. But I'm just saying between now and November, the onus, the compulsion to find this guy guilty is so great among the people who think he's Hitler. The Stormy Daniels part is only there to draw more attention to it, I, my, my guest was being a little more uh, delicate with his words, but that's what it is. It's just so people pay attention. Why? Because we're all dumb. When you're scrolling through your social media feed and you see something beautiful, you stop. When you scroll through your social media feed and you see something that makes you mad, you stop. So you have those two little elements in there because Trump's a polarizing figure. People like to support him. People like to hate him. Then you throw in the, you know, the sex element. I hate I hate that that matters, and it shouldn't, but it does. And I don't want to hear it. I don't want to hear it when when he's found guilty and people call in to be like, "This is this is a travesty." Well, you didn't see it coming. I see it coming. That's what I see. Is that what you see? Eight hundred two eight eight nine two two seven. I don't know if he's going to be found guilty in the Georgia case. The Georgia one has gone just all kinds of haywire. The Fannie Willis uh, affair again shouldn't matter. But it obviously shows that this isn't a woman who's following it, you know, the the most buttoned up by the book textbook prosecution possible. And then, you know, the, I don't even care that there's echoes that she had another affair with another person on her staff. I mean, good for her. Way to play the game. Girls as players, too, according to the radio. Uh, but some other stuff happened in Georgia that it kind of it's very disappointing that these other things are in the media and dominating, whether it's Joe Biden slurring over some speech or Donald Trump in like his 18th court case uh, of, of the last six months. The things that are going on behind the scenes, more important, but it's not interesting. You don't stop on your social media feed when you find out, well, the Georgia State House had an investigatory committee on the, the recount and, and was publishing their findings. That's, that's not salacious. There's no boobs in that. There's no affair in that. There's no crime in that. I mean, just overt crime. But these things are happening. Did you even hear about this? See, this this is the dastardly part. And I'm not saying they do this on purpose. Like, they're purposefully distracting you so they can get away with this over here. It just happens to be that this isn't sensational, but super important. The Georgia State House, I wasn't making that up. They really did have an investigation into the, uh, the election and the recount process. And they kind of ran into a roadblock because when they're trying to prove some of these things or disprove some of these things, they're missing ballot images. Now, Trump lost by less than 12,000 votes. So if there's more than 12,000 images missing, you have a right to be suspicious that I'm not sure that uh, if we can't reproduce the results, like they can't do another recount because they just magically lost some images. How many is it? That's 
the rub. That, that That's why this should be news. If it was 12, whoop de doo right? If it was even 10,000, whoop de doo Does the investigation confirm that there are missing ballot images? Yes. Yes. Do you know why 380,761 ballot images from Election Day machine count are not available? We subpoenaed Fulton County for all of their ballot images. Uh, We received approximately 518,000 ballot images. From Election Day? Those are for the recount. Those are from the recount, but we, we have no ballot images for 380,761 ballots from election day, correct? What was subpoenaed was the ballot images for the recount because that's what this this case was about, not the election day. Does Fulton County know why there are not 380,761 ballot images from election day. You see how that's not as exciting. It's not as titillating as an adult film star describing her sexual acts with the guy that was president before he was president and he was married. So it was an affair and she was trying to get on his TV show and she was pitching him another show and he was trying to do his thing and be Mr. Cool and going from gold toilet to rap video to, I don't know, selling steaks or whatever he was doing back then. Okay, I get it. It's not as cool. It's not as sexy. This is more important. This is more important than the order of foreplay in a supposed affair in a non-disclosure agreement trial. But what does this mean? 380,000? They can't find the ballot images for 380,000? All right, so what we're going to do next on The James Show, because I'm going to force you to go through this important topic here that's being glossed over by the, the so many other platforms. And I'm going to show you what the reporting was like in January of 2021, when the fuss was being made to begin with about this Georgia election, weird things happening. That's coming up next on The James Show. News Talk 820 WBAP now on FM at 93.3. Hey there. Welcome to The James Show. News Talk 820 WBAP now on FM at 93.3. And the question I get asked quite often from people just like yourself, other listeners, is if they're distracting us with all these big stories that don't matter, what's really happened in the background that we need to know about? This is one of them. Uh, Georgia, the, the state of Georgia, their house their state representatives and the House of Representatives had a committee that went through and they investigated. And this is the, the dirty little trick that you see over and over. If something bad happens, okay, you can, you can have them investigate it. You can just delay the investigation and put up roadblocks and use all kinds of tactics to stall. And then three years later, when the truth comes out, no one cares anymore and you can get a, you can get away with it. Well, that's not very justice like. Oh, no, but that's social justice he like so when the house comes out from georgia and says hey man we're missing three hundred thousand ballot images just so you know i'm not making this up i'm gonna play it again for the new people does the investigation confirm that there are missing ballot images yes 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 do you know why three hundred and eighty thousand seven hundred and sixty one ballot images from election day machine count are right. not She's not going to answer the question, but yeah, 380,000 is their why. Yeah, because we got to we had to erase them so you guys wouldn't catch us. You think she's going to say that? No, but I want to uh, I, I want to go back and reset the context in which all this was happening. Jump in the DeLorean with me. We're going to go back. It's only going to be three years, three years in a few months. We're going to go back to January of 2021. This was a very contentious time in our lives. We were still in the tornado of COVID. We were between the election and the inauguration when things were still up in the air like we've never seen in a long time. And 60 Minutes comes out, and this is from January 12th, 2021. So this is 10 days or so before the inauguration of Biden. And this was after January 6th. So they th- this was total blowtorch reporting from 60 Minutes. I want you to imagine if you are a, a strident, lifelong, high-paid Democrat activist, would you change one word of this reporting? And if the answer is no, then this does not deserve to be coming from a news outlet. This is political activism straight up. I just want to, I just want to remind you how bad the reporting was now in the hindsight that we know the truth three years ago. Why did the president help incite the riot that killed five people at the Capitol? It may be because four days earlier, 
he failed to get the state of Georgia to take away Joe Biden's victory. A week ago, Saturday, Georgia's top election official, Secretary of State Brad Raffensperger, spent an hour on the phone listening to the president lie and threaten. Okay, so we know everything that he said there is false. Five people were not killed in the insurrection. That was a lie. I mean, that's that's hilarious, though. It's like, why is he so evil? And what was the other thing that made that? Why did saw the Mike president help incite the riot that killed five people at the Capitol? It may be because four days earlier, he failed to get the state of Georgia to take away Joe Biden's victory. Yeah, he failed to get him to take away his victory. Turns out. Probably didn't win. There was no victory to be taken away. It turns out that if this, you know, theory, this 18,000th conspiracy theory turns out to be true, then it wasn't Trump trying to steal a victory away. He was trying to prevent the election from being stolen. And you butthead staying in the way were the ones literally stealing it. But listen to how like sensational and ridiculous the the word choices were. And then he goes in a hour long phone call and proceeds to lie while he's literally lying. You're lying right now. You just lied about five people being killed at the insurrection. But no, he's Trump's a liar. Look out for these guys. And then uh, we continue. Scott Pelley trying to find votes is okay, all of a sudden thank bad. Thank you very much. Hello, Brad and Ryan and everybody. From the start, the president seemed delusional. And we uh- delusional. What the hell was delusional about it? There was something suspicious about the Georgia election. We all saw it in real time. Anytime there's an election and they, oh my goodness, we have to stop counting. And then, yes, they stop counting. They turn the lights off when they turn the lights back on. Oh, here's like 50,000 new votes we found. Oh, they're all for Team Blue. That's just a coincidence. No, you're not delusional if you question the results of it. If that only if that happens in five states and five states only, and it only happens in swing states, not a red state, not a blue state, didn't happen in Texas, didn't happen in Vermont, happened in five swing states. What a coincidence. What an amazing coincidence. And then you have this where you go back and, well, well, let's investigate the findings here. Oh, I'm sorry. We're missing 300,000 images. Okay, so let me get this straight. Y'all stopped counting in five swing states, turned the lights off when the lights came back on. Team Blue had an overwhelming swell of votes that just magically came out of nowhere. Nothing nefarious to see here. Oh, no. And they all went his way. And in in the in these swing states, there's red counties and blue counties. There's red precincts and, and blue precincts. Didn't happen in the red ones. It only happened in the hyper blue. Like you could look at Georgia, and basically all of Georgia and a little bit of Macon or whatever is red, except for these little hyper blue urban areas. And that's where the voting stopped. That's where it happened in Arizona. Same story. That's where it happened in Pennsylvania. Same story. Huge coincidence. Oh yeah, but to question it, delusional delusional it's delusional to question an election when the top story for 2017 2018 and 2019 was questioning the election that's how bad it was here's another lie the president said in the call that 5,000 georgians voted in the name of dead people right well it was two two dead thousand no two yeah no yeah it was just two that's all that not believable not believable it is this is not the most up and up uh, fraud proof election possible and now we can't even go back and check it because 380,000 ballot images are missing so they can go say it was two fine prove it can, can you show us the evidence can we have a recount and can we go cross reference your list of names with uh, the, 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 the ballots oh no we can't do that because somebody air quote lost them yeah just like Epstein's camera just happened to go out and his roommate slept through a murder how would you describe the president's claims of vote fraud in Georgia fantastical unreasonable, uh, lacking in any factual reality. So the Democrat Party owes 60 minutes for that campaign footage. That, I mean, that's an hour-long campaign film that they ran on January 12, 2021. All of their reporting turned out to be false. Every single part of this turned out to be a lie. But no, no, no. Look at the, look at the porn star accusing the president of nasty stuff, and that's far more important. Sure it is. It's the James Show, News Talk 820 WBAP, now on FM at 93.3. Hey there, welcome to the James Show, News Talk 820 WBAP, now on FM at 93.3. Welcome back to the big show. Well, top story, whether you're looking at Fox News or whether you're looking at Fox Business or whether you're looking at uh, MSNBC or CNN or my social media feed, Stormy Daniels took the stand again in the Trump trial. 
And look, it's salacious. It's sensational. It's sexy. Uh, but don't be so dismissive because I, I have a strong suspicion that this is not going to go the way that you think it's going to go. Dunham Biles with the Biles Wilson Law Firm here in Dallas joining the James Show for a little more legal depth and expertise. So uh, did we learn anything from the Stormy Daniels trial? Because I've heard a lot of people say this was all just for show, but certainly somebody got something out of this, Dunham. Well, it was for show, unfortunately, but uh, I I think Trump actually got quite a bit. I think Stormy shouldn't have ever been on the stand and certainly shouldn't have been allowed to say some of the things that she did. But at the end of the day, what she did make very clear is that she hates Trump, that she fantasizes about Trump being in jail, and that she owes Trump $500,000 approximately, I think it is, from a judgment uh, against her. And she she won't pay it no matter what a court orders her to do, and she'll go to jail. Now, that is not the testimony from people who are usually believed. Well, uh, give her points for being honest, at least in in this uh, instance. That that sounds like uh, honesty that doesn't work in her favor. Uh, do you think he could st- still be found guilty? Uh, you never know with the jury and uh, with this judge and some of the rulings he's made. It seems like it's a little bit of a uh, stacked uh, deck, but I would hope that uh, eventually it comes out the out uh, the correct way, which is it doesn't appear to me there's any crime even involved in this, much less uh, a felony. So uh, one would hope that if he is found guilty, the appellate court would uh, correct the wrong. Is this one of the situations where it has to be a unanimous jury, so just one person dissenting can save his butt? Uh, you know, I, I'm not I'm not a New York lawyer, but uh, it's, I, I assume the answer is yes. In fact, you, for her guilty, you're going to have to have a unanimous uh, jury. Really? Because I know I, I don't know the differences because I, I I'm not a lawyer, but I've I've observed that in some trials a majority is enough to convict, and other ones it has to be unanimous. And I, I think that if it's unanimous, he has a pretty good chance of of getting off on it. But if it's just a majority, there's there's no way he's going to survive in New York jury of his peers well uh, well uh, the good news on that is in, in no court that i know of is is a uh, majority sufficient uh and in civil cases for example you could have sometimes a 10 to uh verdict depending on the place you are or it depends on on the, the state that you're in and what the rules are but uh, i'm gonna guess that it's gonna have to be unanimous in new york on a on a criminal matter oh okay so yeah civil i guess is where you get some of the the wiggle room there because that's what he needs a little more leeway because at at most we're taking away money we're not taking away liberty so what's uh, next dunham what what happens next in this trial is there a few more witnesses or are we about to wrap this thing up i i you know they predicted this would go six weeks or so uh i don't know where we stand with them but obviously they have not yet gotten to to Michael Cohen, uh, which is it's an odd case when your when your star witness is Michael Cohen, but uh, but they haven't gotten there yet. That's so. where we're at. Uh, all right, so uh, whatever, uh, ver- when, whenever the gavel hits, if he is found guilty, is he going to go to prison right away, or is it going to be delayed pending appeal? And how long does this appeals process take? Like, what happens after the trial? Well, one, you'd have to have a guilty verdict, and then you'd have to have have sentencing which doesn't necessarily mean you'd have a prison term. So we'd have to see how that works out. Um, so we, we don't yet know. We'll, uh, we'll have to wait and see how that process lands up. Uh, but I, I can't imagine that he they land up sending him uh, directly uh, to prison, uh, certainly not uh, an, uh, until an appeal is done. But you, you don't know. Well, because the things would get really saucy if he gets put in cuffs and taken to a prison before Election Day. Yeah, and, and one has to wonder, some of these cases and the processes being used, whether you're talking about a Georgia case or somewhere where somehow the government has, has is arguing they have rights, which is not the way our system works. We have individual rights, uh, and they want a speedy trial. They rush these these trials and attempt to get them before, uh, uh, election, before the election. Yeah. And, and so one has to wonder about the processes and, and practices that may be employed and why they may be employed in this particular case. Because they're treating this one very differently than any other one. All right. Another jurisprudence basics for my lawyer guest here. Uh, So if he's found guilty, it's not necessarily over. There's an appeals process. If he's found innocent, is this put to bed or is there something else the the state can do to keep it going? If the jury finds him not not, uh, guilty, that's the end. Okay. Dunham Biles from the Biles Wilson Law Firm here in Dallas. Thanks for being on the James Show and helping out. Thank you, sir. It's a lot easier than going to law school myself for a few years and just ask a lawyer. Makes it so much easier.
All right, uh, this is the James Show. Any comments on that? 800-288-9227, 800-288-WBAP. You're listening to News Talk 820 WBAP, now on FM at 93.3. This is Miguel in Burleson. You're on the James Show, News Talk 820 WBAP, now on FM at 93.3. What's on your mind, Miguel? Hey, buddy. This is actually from Cleburne, but Burleson at work, no problem. I've talked to you before. I'm, I'm the famous ADL listener. Uh, real quick, the comment I had was uh, back about the part on Trump. Real briefly, let me say two things. Number one, he will be found guilty, not because he is, but that's, that's the way the fire system is going to work. He'll win upon appeal. But last but not least, the other thing that's going to happen is it's no mistake or coincidence that all these trials they got going across the nation for different things and whatever, even though most of them are in New York, it's all to tie him up so he can't campaign. And where they don't get the point is, He's campaigning even though he's not campaigning. So it's going to come down to the wire. What's going to be difficult is if he does not get reelected and he wins, if you know what I mean. Ooh, okay. A couple couple of thoughts on that. Um, I think you're absolutely right. I enjoy your skepticism because I, I am tiring of the people saying, this is a ridiculous case. There's no way that this is going to... That's what you said about the fraud case where he was doing the bank loans and, and the um, the other... New York case that he got found guilty on. No, the, you guys were wrong on that one. So it doesn't matter how ridiculous or this doesn't even deserve to be in court or this is past statute of limitations or this is a, a federal statute that's being processed at the state level and the, there's all kinds of like little technical... There is no technical outs on this. Y'all need to get ready for Miguel and Cleburne to be right. He's going to be found guilty. That's all they need. They need the gavel to slam. They need some negative headlines. They need to, ha- to have him talking about this and can, can control this man and have him in court and talking about Stormy instead of being out in swing states talking to the voters and and actually campaigning. I think you're absolutely right and and uh, I I am not feeling good for these people who uh, are overconfident about his chances. There you go. So that's what it's all about. And what's crazy, uh, James, is that you would think that more people than me and you, you know, we're only two of 350 million. It makes no sense to me why they don't connect the dots and why. This has not been overthrown way before now, but it is what it is, and that's what it is. Okay, uh, the connect the dots. The, now, now we're going to go ahead and disagree again. Sean, did you read Evan Sayet's book? If you read Evan Sayet's book, you know why half the country doesn't care, and half I think half the country does agree with this, Miguel. I think that well, out of the people that are paying attention, you know, I've, I have a running theory that forty percent of the country is paying so little attention to what's going on. Their their opinion re- means nothing. <laughs> Right. I've done too many of these man on the street bits where you saw Jay Leno jaywalking and he would ask like very easy questions like who's the vice president of the United States and only like four out of 10 people would get it. They didn't have to do selective editing to get those results. That's what happens when I take a microphone or if you took a microphone out and you just stood in like Main Street and Deep Ellum and start asking random people questions. Almost half of this country is so uninformed, it doesn't matter. But for the people that are watching, there's us who see this for the the scam that it is. There's uh, out of the other half of the people who are okay with this, they're split into two groups. And this isn't just Evan Sayet's theory. He he just uh, his rhetoric was so much better. Uh, Mark Levin has this too, uh, where you, you divide them into the true believers and the mindless foot soldiers. And the true believers, Trump is their biggest hurdle to power. For the mindless foot soldier, Trump's evil, racist, bigot, sexist, homophobe, wants to kill black people and babies and farts in elevators. He's a terrible person. So that's that's why. And if you thought you were fighting Hitler, you wouldn't care if there was some trumped up charges that were being uh, tried at the wrong level. You know, it's a federal crime being charged at the, the state level or we have an activist judge. If you thought you were fighting Hitler, you wouldn't care if the charges were legit. You would just want to put this guy in jail because that's what just that would be good for the country. That would be good for the planet. That'd be good for a humanity period. And so once you've just whittled down and sharpened to a razor like consistency, their hate for this man, then you can understand why they would not care about all these obvious, obvious injustices that are being done to take him down. 800-288-WBAP, 800-288-9227. This is The James Show, News Talk 820 WBAP, now on FM at 93.3. Welcome back to The James Show, News Talk 820 WBAP, now on FM at 93.3. Stay put, coming up in about this time, an hour from now, we're going to be doing first impressions with my buddy Del Poland. That's where we review the first episode of two TV shows, and then we tell you 
if the rest of the series looks any good just based on that one. So stick with us. Plenty of good reasons to do so. Uh, Trump back in court today. Stormy, I think she's done with the stand now. She's got to go get back to work, whatever that may be. I mean, if she's a, probably. And I'm I'm trying to just set the table here. I don't want you to be shocked. I don't want you to be surprised. I don't want you to be outraged and call on the James show the next day. But I have I'm, I'm just smelling that there's a, a very strong likelihood this man's going to be found guilty in this Stormy Daniels case. My main piece of evidence is the other New York trial that I'm hearing the same thing about. Well, this shouldn't have been tried. Statute of limitations done at the wrong level. Judges acting inappropriate. The prosecutors on a witch hunt. How'd that work out? It didn't work out, did it? So just look, he may be found guilty on appeal. It may be overturned later, but I think they're going to get the gavel swing that they want to get before the election comes down. And that's what this is all about. Steve and Alvarado, you're on the James show. What do you think? Well, I think that uh, people need to think about the judges and the attorneys, ADAs, AGs. They all took a oath, put their hand on a Bible to uphold the law. And they, they operate under that oath every time they go to court. I believe Trump has a really good opportunity to take them all to court on perjury. They lied. They aren't upholding the law. Who are you talking about? Just the judges? Judges, attorneys, ADAs, assistant okay. ADAs, AGs, anybody who took an oath with their hand on a Bible to uphold the law, if they're doing something illegal in court, they're lying. They've lied under their oath. So is, when does that ever happen, though? Has a judge okay. ever... When did, the, when, when did we ever go to space until the first time we did it? Well, I'm, I'm not saying it's not possible. I'm saying it's unlikely because there's no precedent for it. And I don't have to be a legal scholar to go to know that if it's never happened in the history of America, there might not be a mechanism for that. I don't know if well, that well, maybe, but but if, they, if he can hold the hold 15 or 20 people in court for four years and let them experience what he's experienced, it would be good enough. Run him through court, run him through court, run him through court. I, I'm not saying you're wrong, but Steve, you got to remember half the country hates this guy so much. They think not only is the judge acting okay, they think he's a hero. Nothing. Well, that's okay. That, that, that half of the, the, the earth, the, the world, the United States can think that way. I'm just giving him some ammunition that even if it were just simply said instead of done, it would have to throw some fear into people's uh, mind because you know this guy in New York Bragg, you know he's lying. Oh yeah, and oh de- Bragg, definitely. You know the, Agreed. You know the judge in this uh, case he's in right now, you know the judge is lying. Okay, but but also back at you, you know nothing's going to happen to these judges. You know nothing's going to happen to this guy that that's on the bench in this case. You know nothing's going to happen happen to Alvin Bragg. You know that, right? They're going to get well, away I, with it. I, I, I believe you're right, but I said okay. if you can keep these people in court in and out of court for his next four years as president and let them experience what they put him through. I think it would be well worth the effort for him to send the DOJ after them all just to tie him up in court. Okay, I see that. I see that. I Look, um, I love all your points. Thank you for calling, Steve. Let's do Doug and Irving. You're on the James Show. What do you think about this? Uh, do you think he's going to be found guilty? Well, uh I kind of go in with Steve on this deal. You know, we do have a Supreme Court who's supposed to be su- supreme, right? I mean, this is a major uh, year for uh, the reelection. He is a former president of the United States. He should have some power in that or some weight in that. Shouldn't they come in and say, hey, enough is enough. You're, you're keeping this guy from campaigning, which he has a legal right to do. And he has such a, um, a voter base out there that, you know, I'm, I'm saying he's probably going to be the next president of the United States. And uh, he, the Supreme Court just, I think, needs to weigh in on this deal and say enough is enough. You guys are playing a lot of, a lot of games and tying this guy up. We've, we've had enough. Let him go. Yeah, so it has been my observation that SCOTUS never steps in in the middle of something that's nefarious. The only way that they get to have their say is after this is all done, it will be appealed and it'll have to go through probably several appeals courts and circuits on the way up. And it will be dealt with years later by the Supreme Court. They, they are not an actionable law enforcement body that, that steps in like that. They are a judicial review body. And I, I think the ugly thing that a lot of us are realizing is once it gets past summary judgment, you know, the few mechanisms that are set up to stop 
frivolous charges or frivolous lawsuits. Once it gets past that, there is no judicial or law enforcement mechanism to stop these. I mean, he's not just some Joe Blow walking down the street that did something wrong. He's a he's the president of the United States, and they they really don't have a lot of concrete evidence on this. It's he say he said she said uh, hearsay. So uh, and they're keeping him from campaigning. It's just. It blows my mind if somebody's not doing something that could be done. Oh, agreed. I, what what really blows my mind is that half the country's okay with this because I, these people that say, and I'm not saying you said this, but these people that say anyone who looks at this can see this is just a witch hunt and they're you know persecuting their political opposition because it's an election year. Uh, so half the country either they don't see that or they see that and they're okay with it. And I think that's the much bigger problem is how absolutely brainwashed half the country is. And that's that was the big lesson we learned from COVID. There's about 40% of this country that could be convinced to do anything. They can be convinced to wear a mask when they're alone in their own car. They can be convinced that, well, we've got to shut down churches and the freedom of assembly and the freedom of speech and the freedom of the press because it's an emergency. It's like, would you just go through the First Amendment and say we're going to revoke everything in here? That, like that was That was the COVID action plan. It's like, what's the opposite of the First Amendment? Let's do that. And so if half the country's okay with that, I am not shocked in the least that they're okay with the Stormy Daniels trial or the Letitia James or the Fannie Willis or whatever, uh, the, all the Hunter crack smoking prostitute videos. They don't care. Well, I know. <laughs> right? You, you, that's my two cents. You got a great show, buddy. Well, I think that's a good. That's the proper response. Well, I know. That, and that's exactly how I feel. You personified that perfectly because that's, that's my response. Well, I know. What are you going to do about it? I don't know. I don't know. I can't talk sense into half the people uh, in this country. They're not all listening to my show. I can deal with a few people in my orbit, but I mean, there's nothing any of us can really do except for if we all just converted one person, like the person next to us, that friend that you have that's a Democrat or a liberal or whatever. He doesn't know what he is. I mean, you can convert one person. That's all we can ask. It's the James Show. News Talk 820 WBAP now on FM at 93.3. Hey there, welcome to the James Show, News Talk 820 WBAP, now on FM at 93.3. All right, well, we all have a lot of questions about the trial, some that just came up in the last hour. I'm going to ask my next guest, Jeremy Rosenthal. And Jeremy Rosenthal, you know, you've been on the show quite a bit here, uh, TexasDefenseFirm.com. What is the mechanism by which a judge could be punished or somehow reined in if he's acting in a corrupt manner, because that's what a lot of the people call in today and, and in previous shows. They're saying, look, this guy's out of control. They're not following the law. They're just making it up as they're going along. What they're doing is unethical, illegal, immoral, whatever. Uh, is there anything set in place to rein in a rogue judge like this? Elections, uh, voting them out of office, uh, that sort of thing. You can file grievances, complaints. Uh, I find appealing judges and getting them reversed is a good way to get their attention. Uh, but there's nothing like a good old fashioned election uh, in New York State. I don't know if uh, if if the judges are elected there or not. They're all somewhat politically connected in, in some way, shape or form. Some states have a 10 year up down vote. Um, but I mean, uh, a federal judge is a lifetime appointee. This is not a federal judge. So take their job away. That's that's how you do it, at least in Texas. And so the the pragmatic answer is not a whole lot can be done. Like maybe after he's already found guilty and there's the appeals process, he could something could happen. But there's nothing that's going to stop this train is what I'm hearing. Not like that anyway. Uh, I mean, not 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 in that manner. But, yeah, no, you're the bingo. I mean, you're right on the money. It's uh, it, you, you've got to deal with with what you have in front of you. Um, you know, I'm, I'm keeping uh, up with this uh, trial as best I can, obviously. Um, and so it's, it's, it's hard to know. I mean, we're not in the courtroom. There's no cameras in the courtroom. Uh, so it, it's really hard to kind of see what's, what's going on. Apparently it was a pretty fiery day with Stormy Daniels. Um, anytime she was on the stand on Tuesday, they took a full day break. Anytime you give another party, I hate it when a witness is on the stand overnight, because generally what happens is the witness is going to come back and remember a whole bunch of things that they didn't remember the first day or, the other party's just going to dig in and light them up. And that's kind of what happened. So it was a really fiery morning followed up by some more accountants and money people and bookkeepers. All right. So Trump's team has now twice filed for a mistrial connected to the Mm -hmm. stormy testimony. What's going on there? Was that a shot in the dark or should that have been ruled a mistrial? What do you think? 
Uh, a shot in the dark. Uh, what, what happens is you, you, you end up on the defense side asking for a whole lot of mistrials. And, and sometimes that can be really confusing to a jury. But uh, in, in Texas, anyway, if we want to do what's called preserving a record for appeal, the law requires me to object and object and object until the judge tells me no. If, if somebody, a witness says something improper or they say something that's out of line, I object. The judge sustains it. I asked the judge, all right, now, judge, can you tell the jury to disregard that as if that worked somehow? And then the judge will say, okay, the jury shall disregard. And then my next step, if I don't ask for a mistrial, I actually don't preserve my right to appeal. I don't expect to win a lot of those. And frankly, I don't want to win a lot of those because the trial may be going just fine or you just want to get the thing done. But uh, it's pretty common to see a lot of these things. But when you run a witness like Stormy Daniels up there, as the prosecutor, that's kind of the risk, right? Because this is a money paper case and this is financial crimes. And then you put a former porn star up there and she says something that holds the th- throws the whole thing in disarray. There's a little bit of danger in that, but I don't think anybody seriously expected a mistrial to be granted here. Well, we covered the judges. What about these prosecutors? Maybe the judge is, is just running his court in the way he sees fit with nothing illegal. But is there anything that can be done about these prosecutors just trumping up charges like this? Alvin Bragg is an elected official. Um, he is somebody who has uh, put his chin out there, right? Uh, so, I mean, and, and when you're in a venue like that, I mean, maybe maybe bringing charges against Trump is kind of him playing to his base. And maybe that works really well with his voters. Um, there are more and more rules uh, that, that govern prosecutors. Uh, and, 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 and it's a function of all, a lot of these Netflix documentaries, uh, a lot of from the Innocence Projects, things like that. So there are more rules now than ever that kind of govern what prosecutors can and can't do. But as is with the judges, as is with prosecutors, um, they're ultimately answerable to the voters. And that's the singular best way to get their attention right uh is to is to threaten their their job threaten their their dental insurance and and it's the voters that can do that well that doesn't leave us a whole lot of hope down here now does it thank you very much jeremy rosenthal <laughs> texasdefensefirm.com we might have to have a, a a segment on the innocence project one day good stuff happy to do it all my lawyer friends have opinions on them i'd be interested to hear jeremy's thoughts you can find him at Texas Defense Firm. Dot com. Coming up next, now that the Gaza protests and encampments are sort of dying down, or at least they're, they're not as stylish and hip as they were a week or two ago, let's look at the aftermath. Who did it right? Who did it wrong? And what lessons can we learn from Ron DeSantis? Coming up next on The James Show. News Talk 820 WBAP, now on FM at 93.3.